Hi, and thanks for joining me on today's course on payroll integration using Aloha Insight. Now, the Insight payroll integration functions uh, are done under templates, which allow you to run these reports very quickly and easily. However, there's a little bit of setup that we need to do at the very beginning in order to get things configured properly. So to begin, we're going to go to System Setup, and then we're going to go to Company Setup. Now under Company Setup, there's a tab marked Company Calendar. Inside the Company Calendar, we have four specific settings that need to be adjusted for your payroll. The first is the Start Date, and this can basically be any time in the past. So this could be when your store opened, could be a few weeks ago, or it could be when you signed up for Insight. The important thing is just that it's a date in the past. Next, we have the pay period, and you simply need to choose what type of pay period you have, whether it's bi-weekly, bi-monthly, weekly, or monthly. So I'm going to select bi-weekly for this example. And then we have the weekday start and the last payroll end date. Now these are very important as they're both tied into one another. We'll start with the last payroll end date, and that's simply going to be the last day of your pay period. So let's say, for instance, that uh, Tuesday the 17th was the last day of our pay period. Since Tuesday was the last day of the pay period, the weekday start has to be the following day. So we're going to set that to Wednesday. Now it seems like a small change, but if you don't get this part correct, that can mess up your reports for the remainder of the time you try to run them. So make sure you pay very close attention to this section. Once we're complete, we're going to click Save. And now we have some settings that we want to fix at the site level. So we'll click on Site Setup which will allow you to see all of your different sites by clicking on Add Modify Stores. Now we can see all of our different sites and what we're going to choose for today's example is Fort Worth Downtown. So I'll double click it and inside there we have the specific settings for this site including the address and phone number and things like that. But if we go to Advanced Settings there are some additional settings in here. So the first is under Payroll Export Settings and we have the Payroll Batch ID. So this would be a batch number if your payroll company determines that you need to have one and you can just type it in for each site so if they each have batch ID numbers. You could also include a payroll batch description if you wanted to include that. And then we have the payroll company code. So these are site specific company codes that would overwrite any global company codes that you would have for payroll. We'll go more into that in a moment. Finally underneath there we have payroll store setting 1 and payroll store setting 2 and this could be for additional store level identifiers and for users of paychecks this could be where you put in your division and your branch settings for each individual site. We also have a setting down here for employee overtime premium threshold and that will allow you to set the number of hours uh, that it would take to hit the premium threshold. If you need more additional information on that you can just click on the link and it will explain how to set that up if necessary. So once you configure all of your sites, you go ahead and click Save. And now we're ready to set up the report itself. So to do that, we're going to go to Payroll Export Configuration. And inside there, this is going to be where you determine what values appear in your payroll report. To start at the top here, we have the Payroll Company Code. So this would be the overarching sort of umbrella code that you would use for all of your sites if all of them use the same company code. So if we put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7 as the payroll company code, all of your sites will show this payroll code unless under site setup, like we said before, you've determined that you have a payroll company code at the site level. And that's going to overwrite whatever you have here. Next, we have all of the fields and all of the columns that can be included in your payroll report. So that'll include things like employee sales, declared tips, credit card tips, credit card sales, uh, if you pay a percentage of employee sales. It also includes regular and overtime hours, an overtime premium amount if you pay uh, employees an overtime premium, and then you can also include if tipped employees receive overtime. All you have to do for these is simply select the checkbox that you want to include these values. So let's say for instance if I didn't want to include the percentage of employee sales, I'd simply uncheck it. Now we may still see that column in the report itself, but it won't have any values in there. 
Additionally, with any of these values, we have individual codes that you can put in there. So if your payroll provider needs to see a specific code uh, next to employee sales, for instance, you could type it in here. And then that's going to show up in the report next to the employee sales. Just keep in mind you can only use alphanumeric values in these fields, and you can't use spaces. So you'll simply select any of the values that you want to include in your report. And then we have some additional options down here, which are paychecks, division, and branch options. This is only for our paychecks users, but this basically will allow you to choose the division or the branch of store that you're working with. To do that, you could either type in the division or branch, or you can click on the key, which will allow it to point back to those specific keywords that we set up under site setup. Uh, for our division and branch options. So you can select that if you wanted to and you'll see that it populates there. And once again this is only for our paychecks users. Additionally down below we have options to include the Aloha job code in the export file. So if you wanted to see each employee's job code. And then we also have in, to use the Aloha job code export ID. Now the export ID is a field inside the setup in Aloha so that when you add employees um, it will allow it to match up any external job code export IDs that there might be. So let's say for instance that ADP has a value for John Doe and it lists them as employee 123. However in Aloha you have John Doe listed as employee 321. That's where you would use the job code export ID field and you type in 123 so that it matches up with ADP. And then when you run these reports, it's going to pull that field and indicate that it matches up those two employees. Some other options that we have here are to include the job code's pay rate in the export file. You can also not include employees with a pay rate of zero. So that could be things like uh, salaried employees or uh, interface type employees. You can use a master store for other wages, and then you can also include other wages. Now when you click to include other wages, this is specifically for our ADP PayForce users. This will allow you to select the store ID and the POS export IDs for other wages that might be chosen. Now if you have questions on this, you can contact your ADP PayForce representative, and we also have some documentation that we'll show you here shortly. So once you select all of the fields that you need to include in this report, we'll simply click Save, and now we're ready to run the report. So to do that, we're going to click on Aloha Insight, and then we're going to go down here to Reports Viewer. Under Reports Viewer, it'll allow you to see any of the different reports that we offer in Insight, and they're all categorized. And so the payroll reports are going to be under the Export category. Once you choose that, you'll see all of the different payroll providers and the different reports that they offer. Now for today, we're going to use ADP Export as our example, and we'll click that one and click Next. Now we have the specifics for the report itself. It's divided into three tabs. We have Store Selection, which will allow you to choose either all stores or specific stores to run this report for, Report Settings, and then we have Report Schedule. So let's start with store selection. In here, the top area first asks you if you want to use a saved report. Now since this is the first time that we're running the report, you're not going to use a saved report, so we'll move right down to use selected stores. This defaults to all stores, and if you do need to change that, and you want to run a report for one specific store at a time, you can click this button, and it'll allow you to choose individual sites. So I'm going to select Fort Worth Downtown, I'll click Next, and we can see that it's selected. Then you'll go to your Report Settings, and inside Report Settings, the first option that you have is to report your date range options. So inside there, we have a number of different options you can choose from, and typically what you would do is run something like the last pay period. What we would suggest for your first time in running this report is to select the last pay period or a pay period that's been closed out so that you can match the numbers up and make sure that your reports balance properly. So I'm going to select last pay period and we can see that it goes from 10-4 to 10-17. This is where we would validate using our calendar here 
that 1017 was a Tuesday, so that was the end of our pay period, and 104 was a Wednesday. So we know that we set up those properly under company setup. Then you have the report send options, which allows you to choose how you want to send the report, whether you want to view it immediately. You can list it on the portal, which is kind of that main login screen when you log into Insight. You can email yourself the report or other users at a defined schedule. And then you can also rename the report if you wanted to. Finally, in this section, we have the other report options. And inside there, it allows you to choose the format of the report that your payroll provider will need to see. Now, to determine what type of report you need, we have a guide, which will show you where this is shortly. And if you scroll down to the very end of the guide, it shows you all of the examples of the different payroll reports that we have. So it'll show you in blue if it's uh, automatically created by Insight. Uh, it'll show you if we have individual settings that are chosen by you, the user, uh, which are in red. And then we also have settings in green and black, which indicate whether it's set up in the POS system or if it's got POS data. Now up here we have the file type that we need for ADP and Millennium in this example. So it says that it needs a comma delimited CSV file. So all we have to do now is choose the file that we file type that we need, which is delimited file. We'll select our delimiter, which in this case it reverts to the comma, and then we'll choose a CSV file. You also have options in there to uh, see quotation marks, you have language and formatting options, and then you could also include things like a logo or suppress currency symbols if you wanted to. Now that we're ready to view this file, uh, we could schedule it if we wanted to, but we don't actually want to schedule this until we can check the file and make sure that it looks proper and that we have all the correct numbers in there. So what I'm going to do is click Save, and remember that we said to list this report on the portal. So I'll click Save, the report will process, and then we'll jump over here to the portal. You can see in the bottom under Non-Scheduled Reports that our report is processing, and when it's ready, it'll pop up an icon. The last thing we need to do now is to click to view the report. We'll go ahead and open it up. And now that we take a look at it, you can see that this is what the report will look like uh, as you run it. So we have things like the company code, which we uh, set up, the batch ID, if you have a batch ID number, the file number, which would include the employee's ID number, and then all of the fields that you've chosen to include in the report. Now again, this is specific to ADP, but if you refer to the guide, you'll see the different formats that we offer and this will be what the reports look like. We also include uh, the fields up in the top so you can see what the actual columns mean. Uh, it's kind of a guide to allow you to read this. So you're simply going to look at your payroll report and this is why we would suggest to run this for a previous time period because you can match all the hours and make sure everything is correct. And assuming that everything is correct, we can close it out and the last thing that we need to do now is to schedule this report. So to do that, you can do it from this screen. We're going to go over here to the pencil icon, and it brings up our report options again. We can choose report schedule at this time. We simply need to select to schedule the report, choose when we want to run the report, if we want to give a start or an end date to the report, choose when we want to deliver this, which can be daily, weekly, monthly, we can choose it at the end of every pay period as well if we wanted to. And then we choose who we want to send it to, whether it's ourself or to other users via subscriber groups. And you can set up your subscriber groups under System Setup. Then as soon as we click Save, you'll notice that our report jumps up here to Scheduled Reports. It shows you the last time that we ran the report and the next time that we will run the report. Now we do have some additional options in case you're having issues with your report and that's found under here under the support and training tab. The first place to look is under online help and this includes all of the manuals as they relate to Aloha Insight. 
The ones that you would pay attention to for payroll integration would be under Aloha Insight Help Files. We have one called Payroll Integration. And then down here under Aloha Insight FAQs, we have one called the Guide to Payroll Integration. And that's this guide that I've been showing you throughout the course that basically walks you through the entire process that we just went through. We also have a Training Schedule tab which will allow you to choose this class, which is 1.7 Aloha Insight Payroll Integration. It'll show you the dates and times for the course. You would enter in your specific information and click Sign Up, and it will send you an email to uh, get you signed up for this course. And then we have our training videos, which have all of the different training videos as they relate to Aloha Insight. Finally, if you're having issues and you just can't figure out what to do, you can always use the Contact Us link up here in the top. You'll choose your store, which in this case we would choose Fort Worth Downtown, and you'll choose your module name. The module name is at the very top under Insight Reports Payroll Issue. You put in your report name and your contact information along with your status notes. So you could put something like uh, my payroll report doesn't have the correct hours in it or John Doe's hours don't look proper but everyone else's do. Please assist. As soon as you put in those notes and click save, it's going to create a ticket with our help desk and they'll reach out to give you a hand. Now that was a quick look at the payroll integration process. So best of luck with building your reports and remember to use the contact us link in case you have any issues. Thanks and have a great day.